What's really going on between T.I. and 50? Next. What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. Back with another installment of the Mike Power Show. For everybody that's been clicking my videos over the past few weeks, I thank you. I'm truly humbled and I appreciate the love. If you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you'll know every time I drop a video or go live. Our top story of the day. T.I. versus 50 Cent. How did all this start? First of all, I guess it was suggested that T.I. should go head up against 50 in one of those versus battle hit for hit see who comes out the winner turns out we got a little bump in the road courtesy of ti's homie a comedian i think his name is k-dub also from atlanta had a little problem with 50 and his crew recently when he was in brooklyn shit k-dub man where you was where you was at last night in brooklyn in brooklyn in brooklyn, in brooklyn, in brooklyn doing what Doing 50 cent party, had a great time, man, great time. That boy, yeah, yo, he, got a, he either got a real problem some type of way, man. You ask me, he got some type of problem. So let me break this down real quick. The comedian K-Dub was at a birthday party for 50 on stage telling some jokes, a joke that apparently Tony Yayo did not like, a joke about 50. 50 didn't seem to have a problem with it. Yayo took it upon himself to approach the young man and voice his displeasure. And during all of this, apparently, Yayo decided to threaten the man with bodily harm, including the use of a firearm. That's right, he said he was gonna shoot dude. And this is why the conversation between Tip and K-Dub ensued on live. Tony was taking over fit for 50. Like he got 50 emotions in his body, bro. Like then they come to me on some real like he got disrespectful. Super disrespectful. Uh, and talking about shooting and everything. Shooting, shooting. Uh, somebody uh, gonna shoot. Somebody gonna shoot me. Tony somebody gonna shoot me. Ain't none it, of that my man. Ain't no fear. Ain't no fear here. Ain't oh, no fear shoot. here. The so let it be let it, let it be respectful now. Let it be realistic and respectful now. Now I can't show you all the video right here, right now. It's just too long. But I will say that Tip, numerous times during this conversation, stressed the need to keep it peace, that everybody was grown men, brothers fighting brothers or shooting each other was not the way to go. So salute to Tip for trying to keep it peace. But he did have something directly to say to Mr. Yayo. I got love for 50. Yayo, I need to know what the hell this shit is about. I need to know, is that personal? Is that a message to me? I feel like you're trying to send me a message. Yeah, yo, yeah, yo, bro. I'm just saying. We saying ain't no respect there. What's up? Like, what's going on, man? So as you know, Tip comes across very direct 99.9 .9 of not 100% of the time. But even after all that, he still wanted to keep it about the music. He wanted people to respect his standing in this game and letting you know he's not scared to go head up against nobody when it comes to that catalog. I'm good, boy. Dope the fitness. Back to the catalog, man, dope of the fitness. My dope of the 50s. My songs are dope of the 50s songs. And for anybody out there who is still trying to attach the snitch label to T.I., he has some direct words for you as well. I'm going to address this shit too. Uh, all y'all niggas on there talking about a crime stoppers commercial and all that. Look, man, nigga, if I can, if I can get out from up under 20 years for doing a drop, nigga, you can't convince no nigga to snitch. If he was going to snitch, he going to do that shit when he woke up, whether he watched the commercial or not. I don't care nothing about that. The question is, how much... How many motherfuckers, how much information have Tilt ever given any police to get anybody locked up? Zero. So, fuck that. Fuck your mama. Sideways up ahead with a deal, though, nigga. Anybody got anything to say about me and mine? I got my motherfucking paperwork, nigga. Listen, I don't know every single detail that has to do with this case, this beef, or the whole thing about people talk about Tip as a snitch. I know that he got caught with some guns back in the day, and as a condition of him not going to jail, I presume, he was asked to do a PSA with Crime Stoppers or something like Crime Stoppers. So you mean to tell me that if you was facing some years in jail and they told you to film a PSA, you wouldn't go do that shit? Of course you would. So that's my take on that whole thing, the little bit I know about it. On another level, 50 and T.I. is 
too grown, and yeah, yo too for that matter, to be having these kind of beefs. If your last hit is older than your oldest child, you too old to be beefing. So I hope that we can keep it peace. I hope that we finally do get the versus battle. There's no gunfire exchanged in the process. And my money is on tip. My man nephew always in my IG DMs talk about Tip can't mess with 50. I was never really that big of a 50 fan. He got a couple joints I like, but lyrically for me, Tip is the better overall artist. He got the best bars and to me, he got the best songs. People wanna talk about New York versus ATL. I'm not on that shit. New York is the Mecca. They started this shit. Y'all know how I ride with this East Coast shit, but I'm also a fair arbiter. We're not gonna make this an ATL, New York kind of thing. Let's just make it a tip. 50, get that versus battle popping and let's see who comes out on top. Next up is a cautionary tale for all you guys that think you're slick and get caught cheating. Hey, stop the car! Stop the car! Hey, let's go! Stop the car! Let go! Now, obviously, that girl must have the best coochie on the planet if you're willing to get drug all around the city for it. And that coochie better come with a motherfucking stimulus check. And I'm being told we have a fight in the ladies' bathroom. Can you move? Can you move? I done said it once and I'll say it again. If you're going to bully somebody, be ready to fight. Girl got her hands down by her side, thinking that the body mass is going to be enough to stop this ass whooping that's coming. And she caught every bit of that 20 piece. And what you running up in the bathroom for? You want to go take a shit? Hey, don't go in that bathroom. It's an ass whooping hiding in there. And for all you dudes worried about what the next man got in his pocket, I present you exhibit A. Man, fuck them niggas too. That nigga ain't nothing broke about me, my nigga. I'll show you, motherfucker. Ain't nothing broke about me. Where's it at? Give me the money. What? Give me the money real quick. You're not getting my money. That's my money. The fuck? You're Let me see it. You're not putting my money on Facebook. That's mine. Bitch, you are broke. Damn, your girl put you on blast like that? But I'm a vouch for this dude. Clearly, he ain't broke. You can't be broke and you clearly have a sauna in your house some fucking where. This nigga sweating like a slave at the auction. But real talk, if you so paid, why don't you go buy some fucking AC, bruh? Do y'all know who the low lives are? I just found out not too long ago. I wasn't really hip to the whole story. I saw one kind of documentary on YouTube about these guys, New York area cats, thoroughbred dudes, who brought this whole polo exclusive shit to the forefront. Cats used to get on the train hit up macy's all these other stores and boost the fuck out these dudes and they had all the exclusives the the sweaters the the polo shirts the the t-shirts the jackets all of it well they doing another documentary about these guys and i hope you get a chance to check it out i, I see thurston howell the third is involved in it kevin garnett I guess it's helping to make this thing. And that's a historic crew. I think Ray Kwan at one point in time showed props to these guys for, for leading the way on how to rock that low. Know what I mean? And in case you forgot, here's a clip right here. I actually come back with some high end stuff from Fifth Avenue and wear it in the projects. It made you somebody, man. Not only was you fly, you had to be somebody to wear these things because they'll get taken from you if you didn't have a certain status or certain form of respect. The formation of Low Lives, which was in 88, you see these dudes fly as hell, you see us fly as hell. Now that's the old joint, it's a new one in production right now, I'm gonna keep you updated on it. If you hear something about it before I hear about it, please let me know what date that's dropping because I really do want to check that shit out. Salute to the low life, you heard? Yo, do y'all follow Al B. Shore on IG? I do. But after seeing this story that just kind of like popped up out of nowhere where Al B. was talking, let me start at the beginning. Al B. used to be with Kim Porter. Kim Porter is also the ex-girlfriend or wife of Diddy. She passed away tragically a little while ago. I think people said it was from pneumonia. 
Virginia. Well, Al has a son with her. His name is Quincy, named after Quincy Jones. Young Q got like one or two songs I like, you know what I mean? Up and coming dude, getting the grind on. And then of course, Diddy had one or two children with Kim Porter. I didn't do all the research on this shit, bro. I don't be people business like that. But then out of nowhere, Al be sure jumped on IG and started talking about he did not believe what the official cause of death was for Kim Porter. And he alluded to the fact that she was murdered and had a conversation with Easy Mo B. Yes, that Easy Mo B. And basically said, if something happened to me, y'all know who did it. Now, what the fuck is going on? It got something to do with the Illuminati. <laughs> Yo, what happened to Kim Porter? Apparently, Al B. Shore has some information or he has a feeling that he knows what really happened. And a person who says something like, if something happened to me, you know who did it. That guy is in fear for his life. Al B. did and got a lot of them. So you better watch it back. Disclaimer. I did try to get an interview with Al B. Shore and I'm still waiting on a reply. I guess he ain't gonna like seeing this headline down here, but I'm just telling what it is. Know what I mean? Not gonna lie. Al B. Shore is one of my favorites. Late 80s, early 90s. Know what I mean? I went to the show with him, Bobby Brown. I think New Edition was there. Keith Sweat was in the building. So yes, his impact on R&B is undeniable. I'm going to call the dude a legend. Shout to Al B. Sure with the Fly Ass Radio Show. Plus he out there pushing that merch, you know what I mean? Do you have any theories on what happened to Kim Porter? Is Al B. Sure crazy? Or is there something more going on behind the scenes that we don't know about? Is Diddy again involved in some fuckery? And by now you have all heard that Kanye West has announced his intention to run for president in the year 2020. By the time of this recording, he probably already changed his mind back again. But fuck boy, and man who still doesn't remember his hat size, Chance the Rapper decided to seemingly endorsed Kanye West, went on Twitter, asked his people about Ye's chances, and when black Twitter came back with the reality, Chance didn't like it too much. He started calling people racist for not supporting Kanye West. He implied that we all should vote for Kanye West and not Joe Biden. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for. If you dumb enough to vote for a dude that's pretending like this pandemic is not killing us, who's in support of the Confederate flag, who calls Mexicans rapists, who supports neo-Nazis marching in Virginia, who cannot drink a glass of water with just one hand, I don't know what to tell you. But first of all, y'all all know, I already think Chance the Rapper is corny as fuck. Cause somebody that's watching this video right now, you, can you tell me a hit record by Chance? Are you bumping him in the whip? Is he in your top 80 even rappers? Dude is mad corny. And let's leave aside that Kanye said that slavery was a choice. Let's leave aside that he wiped up a thought twice. But you want us all to use our vote for yay, which would be guaranteeing that Trump gets another four years. Nigga, you so corny, I could flatten you into a tortilla. Real talk. And just so we clear, let me show y'all all the chance songs I got on my phone right now. Next up, we visit a young lady whose singing career has gotten off to a rocky start. But first, this commercial break. This portion of the Mike Power Show was brought to you by your scary ass friend. Because why should we both get our asses kicked? You started that shit. And by Dusty Ass Sneakers. That's why you can't get no bitches. Dusty Ass Sneakers. And welcome back. Remember that old saying, be careful how you treat people on the way up because you're going to meet those same people on the way down. Well, this next young lady is the visual embodiment of that credo. Maybe it's time you can bring me back. Pretty decent voice, and yeah, I think we all know what's about to happen, but let's watch that shit anyway. That's what you get for standing on Big Mama's furniture. I'm trying to find something nice to say about this whole thing. So, nice shoes. That's definitely going to leave a mark. Uh, my Scarlet's going to be late for dinner. Hey, and shout to that table for not exploding on impact. Hey, real talk, that was the perfect three-point wrestling fall, though. Hey, Scarlet, instead of spending all that time in choir practice, you should have spent more time in physics. What the fuck you thought was going to happen when you walked to the edge of that table? Hey, all jokes... <laughs> All jokes aside, let's see if Scarlett's doing okay, though. Yeah. 
she'll be all right. Be on the lookout for that brand new album right after she get out that body cast. Hey, lucky she was already in the basement though, right? And yet another example of white people doing too much adventure type shit. I probably present you this. <laughs> So I guess you're not gonna make me that sandwich. Now y'all know I interviewed Shay Noir a little bit ago. Shout to Shay. Bomb ass album with Apollo Brown. Her and Rhapsody kinda at the top when it comes to lyrical females, but it's another female that's looking to put her stamp on this world of hip hop. She goes by the name of Cash Cow. You hoes say you want it, here I come, bitch. No fun when the rabbit got the gun, bitch. I I'ma show your ass that I ain't the one, bitch. Shoot him, pop him, kill him. Not me, that's for damn show. Sure. And shout to the big girls for getting it in. I think she from Memphis, getting some love out there. So y'all go check her out if y'all like that kind of music. Interesting side note, she has another song called Fuck a Salad, I'm Straight, which is the first thing I say when they pick up the phone at DoorDash. So as you know, between COVID-19 and what's going on with the social justice movement, 2020 has been crazy as fuck. There's been a lot of back and forth between activists, pundits, TV personalities, elected official, and also quote unquote law enforcement. This gentleman right here was sick of hearing about all these cats wanting to get at cops. So he thought he would bring the challenge directly to you. Y'all really think we hide behind our badges and guns and a lot of us obviously we, we can't fight. That's what y'all think, right? I'll sign a waiver. How many of you gonna step in the ring with me? Oh, he a real tough guy. But after some professional boxers, namely Devin Haney, accepted the challenge, he had a little bit of a different story. He stated in my earlier video, I did not come out and challenge anybody. I definitely did not challenge black people. I did not challenge uh, uh, Black Lives Matter. That means if you are not a clown and you're not one of the idiots that randomly just walk up to an officer because you're in your feelings and say, take off your badge and, badge and gun and I will beat you up. What I said did not apply to you. Okay, I'm getting all type of professional boxers that have been bouncing, but boxing for 300 years and decide, okay, well, because this cop said this, I want to fight him. And that's the wrong answer. Half of you guys are running off at the mouth because of what I do for a living, but you've never personally met me and I've never done anything to you, nor me. So if you want to get in the ring, make sure if you have a valid reason besides what I do for a living. Oh, so now you know how to fucking de-escalate. Okay, I got you. Please get in the ring with Devin Haney for all of us so he can be whooping your ass saying, stop resisting, stop resisting, stop resisting, bitch ass. Now, I don't know if this is new or old. I'm on YouTube all the time just fucking around. And apparently super producer, rapper, presidential candidate Kanye West seen here after being told the definition of Uncle Tom dropped some sneakers and this guy did a review. Check it out. Nigga, you trying to run for president? I can't even run down the block with them shoes on. Correct me if I'm wrong, but don't them shits look like phase one on the assembly line? Like the prototype before they put the rest of the materials on there? What the fuck is that supposed to be? Listen, on a positive note, you gonna have the most expensive pair of sneaks that ain't nobody gonna try to steal. This for my black people, we gotta stop wild and every time we get pissed off, we just wanna go ape shit. Case and point. It's my whole you put your hand. Oh, 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 oh,
quality looks better than the shit that I be smoking. Incredible technique. And I'm gonna be honest, I can't roll a blunt with these. So shout to that dude right there. And can you please put me on with the plug? In other news, popular rapper Russ, seen here trying to desperately remember the one hit he made, is peeling back the layers on the inner workings of the music industry by showing the receipts. Went on Instagram recently to show everybody what his journey has been from a struggling artist to an independent artist that's cashing big checks. Couple of these numbers like couple hundred thousand a month doing big things. Now I know a lot of you out there saying, yo, Russ can do $200,000 a, a month. I could do that too. What y'all forgetting is the work. Yes, Russ may suck. I don't know. I heard one song that he had, thought it was halfway decent, but everybody keeps telling me this dude sucks donkey balls. Beside the point, as bad as he may be, he cashing big ass checks, but it's the work. Everybody want to be famous, but nobody want to put the work in. Shout to Russ for showing people what persistence and hard work can turn into, even if you suck. I'm looking at you, G-Eazy. -E and finally, my new favorite song is here. Y'all might have heard Lee Greenwood, I'm Proud to Be an American. Trump always played that corny ass song at all of his rallies. Hate that song. Well, these two females decided to go ahead and remix it. Tell me what you think about it. To be an American where not all folks are free And I won't forget the enslaved who died and built this place for free So I proudly lift up all the folks who are still oppressed today Cause there ain't no doubt this ain't our land Fuck Trump and fuck the USA Yes, Trump pack yo shit and we could talk about it all we want, but y'all gotta make sure y'all get out and vote just like I will this November, cause we definitely will not survive another four years with this man in office. And with that, I'm about to sign up out of here. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you just saw, hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to this channel, share it with your people and hit that notification button so you'll know every time I drop. Other than that, I'm Mike Powers. I'm out.